All right, <clears throat> so we're talking about designing a website. And I think the point I tried to make through the first uh, section of this lecture is that really designing a website is more than just picking out pretty colors and so on. Designing a website is about creating a site that will help users achieve their goals and help the organization, whatever the organization is that's making the site, achieve their goals as well. So we're talking, we're going to talk about a five-step process for designing it. Any big task that you have is better if you spend some time planning it. All right? Um, writing a paper, going on a trip, any of these things, you know, it, it pays to spend some time thinking about it, planning it. Doesn't mean that you're always going to follow your plans to a T, but you want to have sort of some idea of what you're going to do before you start doing it. So we're coming up with, or we have a five-step process for planning the websites. First is called the scope. Oh, no, it's not called the scope. Second one's called the scope. First is called the strategy. Second is called the scope. Third is called the structure. Fourth is called the skeleton. And the fifth is a prototype. Now, it's significant to, to notice that the first four start with S and the last one doesn't start with S. The reason for that is the first four are diagrams and words and text. They're not web pages. The last part, the prototype, is actual web pages that you're going to create. All right. Last time we spent a good amount of time on the strategy. And the reason for that is that sort of sets the goals for the whole project. If you don't get that right, the whole project is liable to struggle. You're liable to struggle through the whole project. So we talked about what you do in this section. And for this assignment, you're going to write a brief explanation of the purpose, a paragraph or two being as specific as possible. The example I gave was, it wouldn't be sufficient to say you're going to do a site about basketball, right? There could be so many different things that you cover under that umbrella. And you're certainly not going to cover all of them. But you pick one aspect of basketball. Maybe a preview of the NBA playoffs coming up. Maybe the U.S. Olympic team as they get ready for the 2020 Olympics. Or maybe you want a uh, instructional site that will teach kids how to play basketball. And that was the one that we were sort of focusing on. All right? So, a purpose statement might be something like, I'm going to create a website for um, kids middle school through high school to learn the fundamentals of basketball. Or maybe to learn the fundamentals of shooting a basketball. Because, again, even playing basketball, there's a lot of ground to cover there, right? Offense, defense, dribbling, rebounding, blocking shots, all those sorts of things that you could cover. So maybe you're just going to have, for your assignment, you're going to have only about shooting basketballs, all right? Um, remember, you have to have six or eight pages for your assignment uh, for the project, so... You know, you want to have it specific enough where you can cover it adequately in six to eight pages. If you come to me with an idea, I can let you know if, if, it, if it needs to be a broader or more narrow. Usually, most people come to me with uh, topics that are too broad. So think as specific as possible. And if it happens to be too, too narrow, you can always expand it a little bit. Like, for example... Um, if you said, well, I'm going to make a real narrow and say a website about shooting free throws. Well, that's kind of real specific. All right. Um, I don't know if you could get six or eight pages on that. All right. Um, at any rate, so you write and you define the purpose of your site. You then come up with some goals for the organization that is creating the site. 
I'm saying organization. It could be an individual person, right? An author could be creating, you know, you could be an author and creating a website to promote your, your writing, all right? In which case, or you could be a photographer and are creating a website to showcase your photography, all right? So you could be the person that you're creating it for, or it could be an individual, but I'm going to use the word organization uh, anyhow, simply to, to include all those, all those things. You're making a website for a reason. You might uh, want to... Um, use the website as a way to get uh, a job. A portfolio is a great example of a site like that. You can put examples of your work online and allow prospective employers to sample the work that you've done. All right? And in that way, possibly, you can possibly get a job. Um, you might want to uh, What else, what else could you possibly have as a purpose? So the basketball one we had last time, uh, your purpose could be to offer instruction, but also to uh, recruit people to come to your, or, or I think we said to offer instruction for the team that you coached. Another goal could be to um, try to recruit people to come to your summer basketball camp. And we had a third goal as well. <laughs> We're then going to define three personas And for each persona, we're going to pick three goals. Now, in an in a actual real-world project, you wouldn't limit yourself to just three. You would have as many as you thought you really had. I'm just saying for the size of assignment that we have, three is probably enough. Likewise, three goals for each person or each persona, that's probably enough for uh, the assignments that you're doing. All right, but again, in the real world, you wouldn't limit yourself to three. You know, you, you might have four or five personas. And what a persona is is a person that you make up. You give them a name. You talk about a little bit of background information about them, and you list their goals. Why would this person visit your site? And each persona is represented representative of a certain type of person that's going to visit the site. The persona that we did last time for the basketball example was a dad that wanted to help their kid, um, you know, improve their basketball skills as they go into high school. All right. Another persona could be a coach for another team that wants to improve their team. A third persona might be a high school kid that was on the high school team that wanted to improve their skills. Now, keep in mind that the goals that each persona has, as well as the goals that uh, the organization have might overlap a little bit. And that's okay. They probably should overlap a little bit, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to achieve all of them. All right? So you want to make sure that you've defined all these goals. And so you know, so you have a clear idea before you start, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? The most frustrating experience in all, in all kinds of software development or web development is when you spend a lot of effort developing software or a website for someone, and then you realize that you didn't solve the problem that they, were, that, that they really have. All right? And uh, that's frustrating, because you may have done a lot of good work on a technical level, but your design work failed. All right? And by design, we're not talking about, again, the colors and the fonts. We're talking about the identifying of the goals. That is the critical part of design. The other stuff comes later. All right? The other stuff's important. It's important to the degree that it will help users find their goals, find the information they're looking for, satisfy their goals. Now, one thing that I mentioned is that goals don't include things like the site will have a good navigation. All right? That's a true statement, that the site probably sh you should have a good navigation. But that's almost assumed, right? I mean, you could maybe find exceptions to that rule somewhere, but some oddball website. But generally speaking, you want your site to have a good navigation. All right? So that's an assumption. That's just a basic principle of web design. Now, later on, you're going to use things like colors and fonts and so on to help make those things clear. And that's where 
the appearance part of web design is going to come in. So the goals are going to be specific to the content of the site, not specific to just web design. All right? We'll use attractive colors. Well, I hope, I don't know whose goal would be to use ugly colors. All right? It'll be easy to read. Well, yeah, of course it'll be easy to read. Who wants to visit a website where it's hard to read? So those are things that are just assumed. So the, the goals relate to the content. All right, that kind of wraps up most of what we talked about last time, just to review and to rewind and to put it in context. Now we're going to talk about the other phases. And the next phase is what's called the scope phase. In the strategy phase, we define the goals. The scope phase, we define the requirements. Another way to say the scope is the requirements, the list of requirements. A requirement, again, won't be something that you assume, like a requirement isn't, it will have a good navigation. All right? That's assumed. All right? But the requirement is what we're going to put on the website to achieve the goals. All right? For our website. So let's say we're doing our, our basketball tutorial site, our basketball training site. Some of our requirements might be something like this. There'll be drills for coaches to use. All right? Shooting drills for coaches to use. Maybe that's not even enough. Maybe that's not even specific enough. The site will contain the following drills. Free throws. Layups, jump shots. Again, I hope my basketball example isn't confusing. If you're not a basketball fan or you don't, I hope you know at least enough about basketball to know there's different kinds of shots you take. So if you're trying to teach people how to play, you might want to teach them three different kinds of shots. That's all you really need to know. I don't know why this example popped into my head. Probably because of all the trades the Cavs made recently. So they're starting, to, they're starting to do good, so or do better, so, uh, you know, we're starting to think playoffs uh, again. Even this might not be specific enough. You see, the more specific you define the requirements, the better it is. Why do I say that? Why is it good to define your requirements as specifically as possible? What's wrong with saying the site's going to have show drills about free throws? There could be multiple free throw drills. Could be multiple free throw drills. And what's more, um, how are you going to show those drills on the site? Video. That's one option. What would another option be? Detailed descriptions. Detailed description and text. What would another option be? Diagram. A diagram. What would another option be? Like step-by-step -step photos. Step-by-step -step photos? Excellent. I can only think of one other possibility. An animation. Are you going to put all those things on your site? Probably not. All right? So, you might decide which of those you're going to use. Now, a good principle in web design, and we'll come back to this later on when we talk about accessibility, but it's often good to show the same information different ways. So I wouldn't pick just one way. I might pick a couple ways. So I might have a video along with text, or photos along with text, or animation along with text. 
Why do I say that? Why would a video not be enough? Or a photo not be enough? Or an animation not be enough? Why would I, why would I include text as well? You know, the video show you everything you need to know. Yes? Just a further explanation. Further explanation? And why is that good? Because it helps them understand better. Helps people understand better. That's true. There's a couple of educational principles that involve, uh, that, that come into play. If you notice, like for example, I don't know if any of you guys can remember like when you learned math. All right? I don't, I don't remember when I learned math. I sort of remember when I learned math. But what teachers do sometimes is they use like objects to help, to help students. So they'll say, okay, I have two markers. And I add to it two markers. What do I have? Markers. All right. They might even write on the board. I have two markers, and I add to it two markers. What do I have? And the answer is four markers. They're actually giving <coughs> several sensory input to the student. All right. They're saying it, so the student is hearing it. They're putting the symbols on the board, so they're seeing that. There's objects that the students can actually touch and feel. Maybe the student has their own little coins or pebbles or buttons or whatever, and the student actually physically picks up two and adds two to it. That's involving multiple senses. And the more senses that you involve um, in, in, in teaching someone something, the more apt there is there they are to, to learn it. All right? It's just sort of a principle of education. There is uh, multiple learning styles, of course. Some people, you know, you hear people say, I'm a visual learner, or I really need to read it, and so on. Not to mention that different ways of presenting the information can give a little bit different view. For example, if you had a video of something in basketball, you know, it might go by too quick. You might not see everything because it's too quick or the video is too small. You might get the general idea of the flow, but you might miss a detail here or there that you can explain in the text. You know, by the way, notice that when this, when this, notice, you know, or you can highlight some things. Notice that the student, when they shoot a free throw, really bends their knees or whatever. All right? So you might pick a couple of ways to show the same information. All right? So maybe a more specific thing would be to say, this site will contain the following drills. For each drill, there will be a video with audio and a text explanation. And each drill is, and the drills that we're going to have are layup, free throw, and jump shot. Wow, that's specific, right? But you know what? Let's say a high school coach a high school hired me to create this site for them, all right? If I show this to the coach and say, this is what we're going to put on the site for you, that's pretty clear what you're going to have, right? They, they know there's, there, there's lo far less room for understand or misunderstanding than the first requirement that we had that will say the website will contain drills, all right? If I say the website can contain, is going to contain drills, that could be interpreted a million different ways. All right? If I say this, well, there's a lot less room for misinterpreting it. All right? So you want to try to make the requirements as specific as you can to avoid misunderstandings. Another reason for making the requirements uh, more clear is, again, it'll, it forces you to really think through what is needed instead of just, like, casually saying, well, it needs drills. Well, that doesn't tell me much. Lastly, what if you're working in a team, all right? I may be working on part of the site, and you may be working on part of the site. If I say the website will contain drills, 
well, that doesn't really tell the person who is going to be doing that page or those pages what needs to be contained. Whereas if I say specifically, then again, less chance for misunderstanding or miscommunication. Now, notice that this relates to one of the goals that we defined, right? If I remember right, the organization, one of the goals was to help with coaching my team. Well, putting drills on the site would help probably coaching the team. Likewise, one of the personas we said would be a coach from another team, and we said one of their goals would be to find drills for their team to, to perform. So the requirements and the goals are go hand in hand. The goals are what they want to achieve. The requirements are the content that you're going to put on the site that's going to help them achieve it. The goals and requirements should match up. In other words, for every goal that you have defined, there should be at least one requirement that helps satisfy that goal. So, if I said one of the goals is to have drills for the players to practice, well, there better be a requirement that says that there are going to be drills on the website. Otherwise, we've left one of the most important goals of the site out of the website, and that's not a good thing. So every goal that you have should match up with a requirement, at least one requirement. The reverse is true, too. Every requirement we define should match up to at least one goal. All right. If it doesn't match up to a goal, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's important enough to be on the site. You might think, boy, it would be cool to have highlights from the 2017 NBA Finals on the website or something like that. But you know what? That really doesn't serve any of the goals that we defined either for the organization or for the different groups of people that we, um, our different personas that we have. So, you probably don't need it. What would be the harm of putting something on the website that doesn't relate to one of the goals? Why do I say avoid that? Yes? Uh, you want your information to be as concise as possible? Yeah, you want it to be concise and you don't want to clutter your site with stuff that's just going to get in the way or distract people or, or whatever, right? So you want to keep it to it's the essentials. You know, you want to be uh, sure that your content is, um, is relevant to the reasons why people visit the site. Now, again, not necessarily all the content will be relevant to everyone on the site, all right? For example, if I was just a kid that wanted to learn some things in my, you know, to practice in my driveway, I'm probably not going to do any of these drills, but there should be other content that would match up with my goals. All right? But if you have a piece of require if you have a requirement that doesn't match up with any of your goals, then you probably don't need it. And if you have a goal that doesn't match up with one of your requirements, then you probably need to add something. Or maybe rethink. Maybe that really isn't an important goal. Maybe you were mistaken when you defined it. So there should be, it's not a one-to-one -one thing. One requirement can address many goals. Each goal can have several requirements that match up to it. But there'll be coverage. All your goals will have at least one requirement. All your requirements will match up with at least one goal. All right? Maybe a biography of the coach. <laughs> that might not be
be immediately obvious why you need that. How is knowing about the coach and their background going to serve any of the goals of the site? Yes. You don't want somebody that's like never had any experience coaching to uh, yeah. provide information like that. Exactly. In other words, that will that will help increase the credibility of the site, and um, that certainly would be a goal. So maybe a biography of the coach would be relevant. Also, if you remember. One of the goals we set for the organization creating this site is to recruit people for their uh, summer basketball camp. And the same thing, why would you send your kid to a summer basketball camp to someone that really didn't know much about basketball? You know, you'd want to, you'd want to know their credentials. So that would help, um, help support that goal of, of showing that, uh, you know, recruiting people for the uh, basketball camp, well, you know, gee, are you a qualified coach? So how many requirements are you going to have? Well, like I said, you're going to have coverage. You're going to address all your goals with at least one requirement. In fact, I would suggest writing next to each requirement, the, you know, number the goals, number the requirements. For each requirement, put the number of the goal that it matches up with. For each goal, put the number of requirement that it matches up with. And when you're done, every goal should match up with at least one requirement. Every requirement should match up with one goal. If you've done that, you are likely to have enough content on your website. I would guess that you're going to have in the neighborhood of 12 to 16 requirements. 12 to 16 detailed requirements for your site. Now I mentioned, just to rewind a little bit, I mentioned for this, for these drills, we might have video and audio, but we might not include photos or an animation or diagrams. Again, you don't want to overwhelm the user with too much content where you confuse them and distraction. That's why you would you'd decide on the best way to present the material. And you wouldn't necessarily do everything you can think of. That's really... That's really a big aspect of design, is figuring out what you're going to put in and figuring out what you're going to leave out. All right? Gee, it would be cool to have an animation, but that's liable to distract people, or they can get that information from watching the video, or, or whatever. So, the requirements will simply be a long list, a bulleted list, or a, a numbered list, of the stuff that you're going to have on the site that's going to satisfy the goals. Keep in mind that for every goal that you have, it can be satisfied several different ways. Your job is to figure out what content you're going to put on the site to satisfy those goals. So for example, let's change the example a little bit. And let's say we're a band that wants to, one of their goals is to get new fans. All right, we have a local band. They have a local, you know, they might have a loyal following, but, you know, we want more people coming to our shows or buying our recordings. That would be one of our goals. What are some ways that we could satisfy that goal? What are some ways that we could try to attract new fans? You could... Um, give out, like, free demos of your music okay. to them. You could give one song to download, or two songs to download. That would be one possibility. What's another possibility that you could do? Another possibility that you could attract fans. Pardon me? So that would be an example of advertising, yeah. yeah. On your own website, let's say. Put your schedule up. Put your schedule up. That would be another way. Hey, come and hear us. Maybe put testimonials from people who like the band. You know, I had the best time seeing this band perform. Maybe have videos of the band. Maybe don't offer complete songs to download, but offer 30-second samples of songs. All right? Because if you're a 
for free, probably. Um, but by the same token, you want to provide a sampling. So you could show videos. You could have 30-second samples. You could have a free song or two to download. Are you going to do all those things? Not necessarily. My point is, is that any goal can be satisfied a number of different ways. Your job when you're doing web design is figuring out how you want to satisfy the goal. Just like the drills could be shown as a video, could be shown as an animation, should, could be a, a sequence of photos, and so on. Your goal, your, your job as a web designer is to figure out what is going to best show that content. All right, that is the first two steps, strategy and scope. So you have these two things, the requirements being just a long list of stuff that's going to be on your website. The next thing comes to the structure page, or the structure section. And think of this as being like a, a site map almost. All right? You have a requirement, a list of requirements, and you know there might be 15 requirements. Are all 15 going to be on one page? No. That's too much stuff on one page. So you're going to spread it across multiple pages. Are you going to have a web page for each requirement? Also probably not. I can combine things together, all right, to form a page. So your job in the structure is to decide where you're going to put all these requirements, what pages you're going to have. And typically, you're going to do that using the form of, of a chart that kind of looks like an organization chart. So, maybe you have a home page. Underneath that, maybe you have drills. Underneath that, you have tutorials. Underneath that, you have your basketball camp. Maybe you have then, underneath drills, free throw, jump shot, layup. And then underneath tutorials you have, same ones, free throws. Jump shot, layup, along with maybe hooks. And maybe other other shots uh, in addition to that. Maybe underneath basketball camp you have the coach's biography and registration for the summer camp. That would be one way to, have to, to organize the requirements that we developed in step two onto our website. All right? This would be one way to organize things. Is it the only way to organize things? Of course not. You know, anytime if, if you ask, is, is there only one way to do something? The answer is usually no. This could be done other ways. What would be another way that we could organize the materials on this website? This is one way that I just suggested off the top of my head. What's another way that I could organize it? Yes. I like that. I like that because I didn't even think about it. Uh, think of that possibility. And that would be a real good one, right? Because, well, kind of like I talked about before, you know, middle schoolers are going to need 
different sort of suggestions, coaching, than like a high schooler would. So maybe you have your home page and you have beginners, intermediate, and advanced. Or, if you prefer, you could put like the age range. This is for middle school kids. This is for junior high. This is for high school. Alright? Then maybe, underneath each of these, you have tutorials, drills, and camp. All right. Maybe you don't have a separate biography page. Maybe you include the biography and the camp page. All right. So you say, you know, Mike Zellers, who coached at such and such high school and, you know, played in the NBA and, and won six NBA titles and so on and so forth. Um, you could put that bio as part of the camp page. Which one of these are the right way to do it? I don't know. All right. How are you going to decide which way is the right way to do it? How are you going to decide? You, you, you probably can't, well, you know, probably have to decide between a couple of alternatives. How are you going to decide between a couple of alternatives? Test them. Pardon me? Test them. Test them? That's a possibility. How would you test them? You could make two different prototypes, depending on the size of the project, and you could actually call users in and observe them. You could actually, if, if you have enough resources, you could get people, you know, you could find another coach and ask them, see if you want to find a drill for your team. How easy is it to find it with this method versus that method? Find a player and say, how, is it, how easy is it for you to find or relevant instructions for you, and so on and so forth. And they do that in big projects, all right? Um, I did a, a summer fellowship at NASA Glenn Research Center, and this is like way back, and um, they were developing a new document, uh, a new site for all the government forms that their employees need to fill out, you know, like request for vacation, um, expense reimbursement, that sort of thing. As you can imagine, the government has a million forms, right? It's very difficult to, it used to be very difficult for them to find the forms on their website. So what they did is they, they came up with a couple different ways to organize them, and then they brought employees in to test them. So that's an excellent point. Sometimes you have the resources to do that. Sometimes you don't. They actually have a usability lab where they video record people doing these things. And they can see, like, how long it takes them to, to do that. So if you have a big budget and plenty of resources, you can do that. If you don't, though, you have to take a shot on your own. So what would inform your decision? What would you go back to? Your users, what they need. And exactly. You'd go back to the user's goals. You'd look at those personas and say, that dad is trying to help their junior high kid get into the high school team. What layout would work better for him? A high school coach that wants to come to this site and find information for his team. The second one. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to answer the question. I'm just going to pose, you would pose the question. All right? You would pose the question, like, what would, help, what would help the high school? I agree, by the way, but in this case, I would agree that the second one is probably a better way to do it. So, good job. All right? But you would ask yourself, you'd try to put yourself in the shoes of your different personas and say which design would work better for them. Now, it might be it would work better for some people one way, better for another. Then you'd have to, like, sort of decide between the two alternatives. All right? But if one clearly seems a better way to organize it, then you'd go with that one. And in this case, I would say, yeah, I like this design better. 
All right, I think this is a better layout for that. So that's what you're going to do in the structure section. You're going to specify how your pages are going to be laid out. All right. How you're going to take all that content that you specified in the requirements phase and how you're going to incorporate it into however many web pages you're going to have. Because you know that you're not going to put every requirement on its own page. All right. And because too many pages isn't good. Then people have to click around to find what they need. Too few web pages aren't good either. If you have everything on one page, it's hard to keep things organized. But there's going to be that sweet spot, and they're going to be organized in a way that is best for what you feel is best for the users that you're trying to, to do. So you wouldn't do what's best for you. You wouldn't do it the way that you would organize it in your head. You'd do it in the way that you would think would work best for the users. If you can actually test that out, all the better. All right? So what I want you to do is I want you to draw a diagram like this. Easy to do in Word. It's an organization chart, basically. So just go insert a chart in Word. Say you want to insert a organization chart. Then I want you to say brief, a brief description of what other alternatives you considered. Because remember, this information could be presented a different way. We could probably, if we spent the time, think of a third way, and a fourth way, and a fifth way. I don't want you to think of five different ways. Think of two different ways. And then explain why you picked the one that you picked. So, I might say, this is the structure that I decided on. I considered having things broken down by tutorials, drills, and basketball camp. But when I thought about it, I figured most people in the site fit into specific age categories, and therefore I would want to direct them to the things that would most benefit them, as opposed to having them sort through a bunch of tutorials, some of which might be too simple, some of which might be too advanced. It's so just a little paragraph explaining why you picked this option instead of that option. You don't have to draw the second option, just describe it in words. But you do have to draw the one option that you ended up picking. So that is the structure phase. I said I'd cover the rest of the day and I have two minutes left. All right, although I did start a little bit late. But I can still do it. The last step is what's called the skeleton. Sketch would also work. And you can do this in Word. You can sketch it out on a sheet of paper and scan it or take a picture or whatever. The skeleton is where you design a layout of the main sections of your page. So maybe for this, I'm going to have a banner on the top of the page. I'm going to have a navigation going across the top. I'm going to have my content area here, and then we have a footer here. That's all a wireframe is, or a skeleton. It's just a sketch of the main sections of the page. Now again, there's alternatives, right? You could have your page set up this way with a banner, a navigation, a content area, and a footer. So you decide what layout you like better, all right? And you sort of sketch it out. Now, you might have one wireframe for your whole site. All your pages have that layout. That's fine. You don't have to have a separate wireframe for each page. You might have a couple wireframes, like maybe your home page has a different layout than the rest of your pages. Maybe your home page has a gigantic banner a big picture with your links like that. So you might have a, a, 
a home page layout that's different than the rest of the pages. That's fine. All right? But you're probably not going to have a different wireframe for each page. If you do, that's kind of bad because you want to keep your pages looking the same way. For this project, I would say one or two wireframes is enough. All right? You don't really need to go more detailed than that. Now, that's the first four steps of this project. The last part we won't cover today. We'll cover starting on Tuesday, and that is the prototype. A prototype, think of a prototype of your web pages as being like a rough draft of your web pages. It's going to be pages that are nearly complete, but not 100% complete. All right? It's going to be there so you can show people what the site is going to look like, how the navigation is going to work, so that they have something tangible to look at. All the other stages are important as far as identifying what you need to do and setting your goals and all that. And the prototype is important because it actually puts it in action and allows your users to get a sample of how your site is going to behave. All right, we'll pick up on the prototype next time. I'm going to go and unlock the lab, and I'll come back to grab the files from here, and uh, then I'll be back in lab. I just got a question about that. Yeah. Um, are you looking for something that's like illustrated, like you drew it out? Or are you looking for HTML? No, that, this is not HTML. This is sketched. Okay, so the prototype will be actually HTML. Hey, Mike. Yeah. In lab, um, I emailed you yesterday about uh, the Java program that we 